Hello, everybody. Welcome to, to the Squared Circle Calendar. On this episode, we're going to be taking a look at April 1975, what was going on in the world of professional wrestling in, you know, in the month of April of the year 1975. So, without no further ado, let's get started. So, we're going to, our first stop is going to be the Far East, Japan. You know, it's springtime again, you know, it's springtime again, you know, in April. So, you know, what, what that means in Japan, in Japanese pro, pro wrestling circles, particularly for the big two, New Japan and All Japan, is that it's time for the, for the single tournament, um, the single tournament touring series again. Um in New Japan, it's today we call it today. It's known as the G1 Climax, but back in 1975, it was called the World League. Um, and in all Japan, it's the Champion Carnival. Now, over the years, these tournaments have, um, you know, you know, they they go through like almost on a yearly basis and go through you know format changes. So, um, so first off, as we look at, look at New Japan, um, we look at New Japan, um, so this is how, you know, so for New Japan, So for New Japan, the way they decided to format the World League in, in April of 1975, and it went from April 4th to May 16th, 1975, was the, and it was their second annual World League. Um, how they did, how they decided to run it was, it was basically a points-based round robin type tournament. Where the top two point getters in 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 it would face off in the finals, um, and the partic the participants in the second annual World League World League of 1975 for New Japan for Japan um, the New Japan slash Los Angeles versions of the NWA North American Tag Team Champions. Antonio Noki and Seiji um, Sakaguchi, the NWA International Heavyweight, the reigning NWA International Heavyweight Champion at the time, Kintaro Oki. Um, the two of them were also reigning, you know, the reigning at the time. Former, the former IWA Heavyweight Champion, Strong Kobayashi, um, as well as Masa Saito. Kotetsu Yamamoto and Kentaro Hoshino, Haruka Engen, um, Katsuhitsa Shibata, and Osamu Kido. So those were the those were the guys representing New Japan in in um, in the World League of 1975. The Gaijin or foreign wrestlers who who were represent the Gaijin wrestlers represented by the following um killer call krupp who came over from from big time wrestling in detroit um super just now there have been a few guys with the name super destroyer over the years this particular ver this the one who donned the super destroyer mask for this for the world tag league was neil guai also known as the hangman um he came over from from Canada, um, probably um, Montreal area. Um, Man Mountain Mike, representing the WWWF. Um, also, let's see, John Gagne, representing the Pacific Northwest. Um, Sangre Fria, representing Mexico. And uh, Farthal Singh, representing India. So those are the those are the gaijin representatives of um 
for the World League um, of 1975. And I'll give more of the results in May when when um, when the finals are in, the finals are in May. But these were the individuals who were participating in the World League of 1975 for April and April and May. And now let's go over to all Japan. Champion Carnival, which again has become a you know a long a long standing tradition. Now these tournaments, of course, got their basis from you know um, New Japan and All Japan's predecessor, the Japan Pro Wrestling um, Alliance Association. The JWA, which of course was founded by Rico Dozan in 1953, and his two top students. Um, Shoei, Giant Baba, and Antonio Inoki would eventually go on to start their own companies. So, the Champion Carnival of 1975 started on April the 5th and ended May the 9th. Um, ended May the 9th. Now, the way that the Champion Carnival was set up, it was set up um, so the first two rounds were so it was basically so set up as a 14 person tournament. The first two rounds were single elimination, meaning two two of the participants got buys into the second round. And then the final four were set into it kind of a round robin type tournament, the one getting the most wins in it after facing every all the other opponents one time would win the champion carnival. Um, for rep representing all Japan, of course, were the NWA International Tag Team Champions of Giant Baba and um, Jumbo Sharuda, the Pacific Wrestling Federation United States Heavyweight Champion, the Destroyer, um, Great Kojika, Motoshi Okuma, and um, Samson Kushiwada, and Akahisa Takachiho. Now, many of you would, would know Akahisa Takachiho by his other name. Many American fans would have remembered. This is the guy who would eventually become the great Kabuki. So this is earlier on in his career. So those are who was representing all Japan. It was Giant Baba, Jumbo Sharuda, the destroyer Dick Bear, Great Kojika, Motoshi Okuma, Akahisa Takachiho, and Samson Kutsuwana. Representing the Dai Jing or the um or you know the foreign wrestlers were as followed. Um former NWA world champion Big Thunder Gene Kanitsky representing Northwest Promotions in Vancouver, British Columbia. Mark Lewin representing Stampede Wrestling in Calgary. Um Killa Kowalski representing the WWWF out of New York. Um, also, um, let's see, Bob Orton Jr. representing Championship Wrestling in Florida. Steve Kern representing um, representing um, representing Georgia Championship Wrestling. And then Mike George representing Central States Wrestling, based out of Kansas City, um, and as well as Mr. Wrestling Tim Woods, who was representing NWA Hollywood. So those are the 14 individuals who were participating in the Champion Carnival in 1975. Also, on another side note, Dick the Bruiser would also participate in the tournament, not as part of the tournament, but he would challenge giant baba for the pwf heavyweight championship um also in in news um while these were going why the world league and champion carnivals were going on in um in new japan and all japan respectively iwa was of course running its dynamite series um a Dynamite Series tour, and on that, of course, on that Dynamite Series, NWA, um, NWA Women's 
World Women's Tag Team Champions Joyce Rabel and Vicky Williams were were on that tour. And now, because of that, IWE was an, was an affiliate of the AWA and not the NWA. They were not defending the NWA World Women's Tag Championships on this tour. However, they would actually go after the um, IW. They would go after. They would um, go after the IWWA Pacific Coast Tag Team Championships held by Chio Obata and um, Tarumi Sakura, who I talked about in the January episode. Um, some controversy there. And then, of course, Vicki Williams herself would go after the IWWA Pacific Coast Women's Championship held by Obata as well. So, also on that tour, Mad Dog Vashon on April the 10th would win, would beat Mighty Inoue for the IWA. Even though this is technically the International Wrestling Enterprises, their championships were known as the International Wrestling Association Championship. So, um, so Mad Dog with Sean would beat um, would beat Mighty Inoue on April the tenth of nineteen seventy five, only to lose lose the title nine days later to Russia Kimura, who at, from this point on would be pushed as a main event star in in Japan. You know, at this point with IWE and later with, of course, All Japan. Now, as we head as we head west from Japan, we head over to England, where um, joint promotions and their and their television and the television program World of Sport, which World of Sport was Britain's version of. You know what we knew in the states here is ABC's Wide World of Sports. That was their own pro, their own variation of, of that type of program, that kind of showcase program. But on World of Sport, World of Sport was sponsoring a tournament to award a trophy to the person deemed the best lightweight competitor on World of Sport. The, the participants in the tournament were as follows: John Naylor, Colin Bennett. Um, Bobby Ryan, Jack Robinson, not not to be confused with Jackie Robinson of Dodger fame. This was a different Jackie Robinson altogether. Sometimes call him Jackie, sometimes they call him Jack Robinson. Um, Steve Gray, Julian Maurice, Leon Fortuna, and Maurice Hunter. I believe I believe that might be it. Let's see. Yeah. So those are so those are the participants in the World of Sport Trophy Tournament held in the latter part of April of 1975. Um, it was um, as I said: John Naylor, Colin Bennett, Bobby Ryan, Jack Robinson, um, Steve Gray, Julian Maurice, Leon Fortuna, and Maurice Hunter. So that happened in England there in April of 1975. That was what was going down in England in 1975. Um, as we move, as we move further west. As um. As we move further west, we head, we get to North America, and we um, our first stop is up in Canada. To let you guys know that by April of 1975, the two the two promotions based in Montreal had ceased operations by April of 1975. Johnny Rougeau's um, IWA International Wrestling Association. Had ceased operation as many of his stars, as many of the wrestlers are started working more for, in Toronto with Maple Leaf Wrestling, and then also um, Maurice Vash Maurice Mad Dog Vachon's Grand Prix Wrestling. I was an affiliate of the AWA. Also ceased operations at this point, and Mont and the Quebec area, Montreal, would not have its own uh, another promotion for about a year. 
for the remainder of 1975 and into early 1976, they would not have a promotion of to call their own. Um, now, as we get into the states, and there was a lot going on. On April 14th was the WWWF's um, Madison Square Garden show, which was shown on HBO. HBO at the time was, of course, a localized cable channel before going national. And the main event on the on that show was Bruno San Martino defending his WWWF championship against Spiros Arion, managed by Freddie Blassie. Um, Freddie Blassie in um, in a Greek death match. So they had basically San Martino and and um, San Martino and Arion had been battling each other for the WWF champion in the early part of '75. The previous month, you know, San Martino, San Martino retained his title in a Texas death match, and they continued their feud into April here. Um, among some of the other matches on that card at Madison Square Garden included uh, the Valiant Brothers winning a non title match against Pete Sanchez, Manuel Soto. Greg Valentine making his first appearance with the WWF, eventually the WWF and the WWE, making his first appearance um, in a match where he beat El Olimpico. Um, Waldo Von Erich beating Chief Jake Strongbow by countout at, at, um, at, with th at 39 minutes in a midget tag match. Um, Little Tokyo and Lord Littlebrook. Beat Little Louie and Sunny Boy Hayes in two straight falls. And then, of course, the last match of the night had Bob Duncan and Victor Rivera going to a, to a time limit curfew draw. Back then, of course, you had to make sure everything was over or just about over by 11 o'clock in New York. So that's when the WWF would start putting their main events actually in the middle of the show as opposed to the, the end. So, um, so as we move on in this, and of course in the states, um, we move on. We also talk a little bit about um, Abdullah the Butcher, who was a busy man in um, in the regions, as he was going back and forth. He was at the time he was the reigning NWA Georgia heavyweight champion. The and the reigning Detroit version of the NWA United States heavyweight champion in Detroit. And he was going back and forth between Georgia, you know, Detroit and Toronto um, throughout the month of April until, of course, lo losing the, the United States title to um, Bobo Brazil in Detroit on the 19th. Um, as we continue also going, also going on around that time, um, down in the Gulf Coast area, Gulf Coast Championship Wrestling, Ken Lucas was dominating the Gulf Coast, Gulf Coast territory as he had he was he was concurrently holding four heavyweight titles in in the region, um, the Pensacola heavyweight title, the Panama City heavyweight title, the Mobile heavyweight title, and um, and the Gulf Coast heavyweight title. Ken Lucas was dominating the Gulf Coast territory of, you know, um, of the NWA. Um, also, um, also, as we head over to St. Louis and St. Louis Wrestling Club, on, on April 18th, um, Harley Race retained his um, Missouri title over Johnny Valentine, two falls to one, um, in a feud that was that was helping um, helping Race um, develop his um, his you know main event status. You know he was being you know built up as a main eventer, 
And so at this time, you know, in early 1975, of course, he had won the Mid-Atlantic version of the um, United States Heavyweight Championship, as well as winning the Missouri um, State Heavyweight Championship, in which he would, you know, defend both those titles, you know, against Johnny Valentine, eventually dropping the United States title to Valentine in July. More than that. But he, you know, but that would be a feud between the two of them, which um, in St. Louis, Johnny Valentine was the father of Greg Valentine, was um, was the face, but in Mid Atlantic, where he was based out of, he was a heel. Now this feud was between two of, unquestionably, two of the toughest, hardest hitting men of their time, in Harley Race and Johnny Valentine. As we move on, we move on to the tri-state area of Oklahoma. Arkansas and um, and um, uh, Louisiana, also known as the Mid South area, which would eventually become Mid South later. But um, but Bill Watts had made his return to the Tri State area after having left it um, about two years and or two or three years prior, um taking the North American title with him to where they had to, um, where the, where the North American title he had became the Georgia, Florida version of the North American title. He brought that title back to the Tri-State area, which would eventually lead to a unification match later in the year. Um, also, Greg, also as we head out west to California, where um, Greg Valentine would be would be um, making a name for himself in California with NW in Hollywood um, already be, you know already in his second reign as NWA America's heavyweight champion in which on April 25th he would get a chance to win the NWA heavy world heavyweight championship as Jack Briscoe would come out to the Olympic Auditorium to defend against Greg Valentine on the 25th. He retained the title at on that card. Um, of course, Valentine under the management of um, Sir Oliver Humperdinck, who was also managing the Hollywood Blondes, who were the America's tag team champions as well. Then as we head back up north to um, the AWA territory, um, Nick Bockwinkle was being pushed as a main eventer, as a guy who eventually replaced um, Vern Gagne as the top guy in the company. Um, basically having a little bit of a slip-up in which he lost the number one contenders match to Billy Robinson in Winnipeg on, on um, April the 17th. And with that, that's all of what was, that was a lot of what was going on in 1975. Um, April of 75 with, with what was going on in professional wrestling. Um, as always, guys, you can check the links below if you guys want to contact me directly. Um, you can click my Discord. Come and check out my Discord. You can, you can you know, message me there. Um, I'm still... Um, yeah, um, also, if you guys like this content, please consider liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. I look forward to the conversation with you guys, and I hope you guys enjoy this and, and if you find it informative. And until next time, bye.